lovely little show on it now not everything no is slick so slick in the world of sport and especially sports radio now i've not seen this next book that i'm going to um, talk about i don't know if it's an official or an unofficial book it's out today published in northern ireland and it's about barney eastwood or mr eastwood as we barry mcgwigan used to call him They're on the line now after what i think has been a hectic day of interviews is the book's author dennis o'hara dennis we're here, we're here, Steve. How long are you, time no see. It, is a lo- it is a long time, no speak, no see. I think see. it was the, uh, well, the first time we were over here was the amateur world amateurs, you know. Yeah, I came to those. That was, that was a great session down there. Yeah, I could never get on the phone. You were on it. Yeah, well, that's well. It's, you know, you've got, I had the farmer coffee back then. I don't think I don't think my mobile worked in Ireland. It was so long correct. ago. Yep, yep. Dennis, now this book, um, uh, the, the Barney Eastwood, is it an official biography or is it an it's unofficial? It's an authorised biography. Oh, okay. That's called uh, Hooked on the Job. Hooked the E.J. Eastwood story. I, I did. I did. I have noticed that in the new edition of Boxing Monthly, you have an advert in little there. Little ad, yes. That's right. Well, little ad, okay. Little ad, small acorns, and all that. Let me ask you this. Now, I. I I've always heard fantastic stories about Barney's days when he was a bookie, when he used to come over to Britain. Um, is, there any, is there anything about that in there? Because that's a really interesting part of Barney's life, you know, in the days just before he got really heavily involved in the boxing. Ah, uh, well, he was always in the boxing, but he, he was thought, in the boxing yeah. in the 60s, you see, but he did move heavily into the horse racing. He owned a few horses with a, a fellow bookmaker called Alfie McLean, and they, McLean's the word, they cleaned up at Doncaster one time. That's what I heard, yeah. made the national papers, uh, uh, Sandy Creek, that was the name. I have a chapter on that. Oh, great. I, look, I think I he, left the, uh, he left the bookmakers, uh, the field book- bookmakers, up the creek that day, you know. <laughs> there was a bit of money went on late by both of them, and the story in the paper at that time was I didn't realise... Uh, uh, Mr. McLean had bet that I was to do it, and we got mixed up. One of those stories, you know. Yeah, one of those. Listen, we, we've encountered plenty of them. Now, Dennis, how much how much cooperation did you get with Barney, or did he just say, you go ahead and write it, and I'll, I'll have a oh, look at it? Or no, were you working uh, closely with him, Dennis? I worked. I uh, took a little time to get him uh, into the swing of things, sure. and we worked pretty closely to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, took over. We started about three years back. Oh, OK. I mean, there was that great period there, almost after McGuigan, when... He had all those fighters based in Belfast, you know, the Panamanians and the whatnot, and Paul Hodkinson. That was a bit of a golden period there for, for, for Irish boxing, wasn't it, in many Magnificent. ways? Magnificent. Uh, the, the hero at that time who took up the cudgel after the unfortunate uh, split between uh, Barney, Barney and, and Barry, Barry was Dave Boy McCauley. Of he course. Was, Never in a bad the, fight. Got a rapturous reception at the launch. He was the, mm. one of the heroes there. But, uh, Barney said he would give up boxing when Dave Boy retired, and I went out with him to Bilbao, and he lost to uh, Rodolfo Blanco for yeah. his ABF title. It wasn't a bad fight, so let's get it right. Well, he, I thought that the boy, at, at worst, should have got a draw, which yeah. would have meant he retained the title. But no, he that, And Barney said once he stopped, he, uh, he would stop as well, and he, and he did so. Mm. And is, is Barney in good health now? Because he's got to be at least about 89 or 207, hasn't he? No, Dennis? he celebrates his 70th birthday tomorrow. You're a joke. You know what? Uh, you know, hand on heart, yep. I would have lost a lot of money, and I would have probably, I would have probably, I'm, I'm, I would have had him closer mm. to 80 <laughs> than 70. Well, he, well, he is. No, he's 70. He'll be 78. 78? Oh, that's more like it. Okay. You, you weren't listening there. No, listen, uh, th- listen, that's one of my bad habits, and on radio, it's dreadful. Yeah. Listen, Dennis, can you do me a favour? Can you give my best to, to Barney? Because I, I haven't indeed. seen him for years. Yeah, well, indeed, yes. Yeah. So the oldest man, I think, in the room uh, at the launch was Paddy Byrne, came over from Brighton. Oh, Paddy's been poorly as well, so that was a great journey. Uh, he did very well. I mean, he was a big cuts man and matchmaker yeah, way back through all the uh, Eastwood era. Yeah, uh, the, all the McGuigan fights, the McCauley fight, and I tell you what, some of those boys did bleed as well, didn't they? Uh, well, <laughs> how much <laughs> and Burns ch- chapter? There was one particular fight, in fact, two of them, but one was really horrendous between little Hugh Russell and Davy Larmer for yep. the one was a, uh, an eliminator, and the next was for the title, for the British Bantamweight Championship. And after that, uh, there was blood everywhere. Blood every. Listen, that could have almost been the title of the book. Dennis O'Hara. The book's called Hooked on the Jab. It's a uh, an authorised biography of Barney Eastwood. Thanks very much for for joining me, uh, Dennis, on the phone. Now.